In the last part of our broom handle Mauser maintenance series, we'll be covering reassembly. We'll begin by inserting our pre-oiled bolt into the upper, followed by the recoil spring. To insert the bolt retainer, the recoil spring can be compressed with a screwdriver and the retainer will pop into place. Now the firing pin can be inserted with the lug lined up to match the cutout on the rear of the bolt. Then we simply press the firing pin in with a screwdriver and rotate it a quarter turn counterclockwise to lock it in place. Now the locking block can be replaced in the underside. Next we can tackle the subassembly. To begin, we'll put the hammer in position and secure it with the hammer pivot. Then we'll put a dab of grease on the end of the mainspring plunger where it bears on the hammer and on the rocker plunger interior. Insert them along with the mainspring into place. Now comes the tricky part, replacing the rocker coupling. As we said before, it's possible to install this part backwards with disastrous consequences. So we need to be sure that the coupling is always installed with the hook facing toward the front of the gun. That said, all we have to do is compress the mainspring plunger and drop the rocker coupling into place. With the coupling done, we can drop the sear onto its pivot point and rotate it down to the hammer. The sear lever can be then pushed upward against the leg of the spring until the circular end drops into its cutout on the sear. Now we can insert the safety in the other side by easing back on the hammer and inserting the boss of the safety lever through its opening on the subframe and then rotating it to the rear or off position. Lastly, we'll insert the takedown latch and rotate it into place with the curved portion facing upward. At this point, it's a good idea to add grease and oil to a few areas. I add a thin layer of gun grease to the rocker coupling where it meets the locking block and to the rear locking surfaces on the block itself. Then I like to use a needle oiler to put a drop of oil on every bearing surface and pivot point. The last place we need to cover is the frame rails, and all that's needed here is a thin coat of oil to protect against wear.
With that done, the next step is to mate the subframe to the upper assembly. To do so, we have to bring the subframe up so that the small stud at the front of the locking block is bearing on the nose of the rocker coupling, and then squeeze the two together until they lock up. If you're working on an older gun that has enough wear in these areas, like the one we have here, you may need to hold the subframe in place to ensure it doesn't move. Then all we have to do is slide the entire assembly onto the frame until the lugs seat on each side and the takedown latch snaps into place. Now we'll cycle the bolt a few times to make sure we have all our parts in the right places. If everything looks good, we can replace the magazine follower and spring, depress the plunger with the floor plate, and slide the floor plate into place. With the pistol assembly completed, we'll want to perform a function test and ensure the safety is working properly. Then all that's left is to wipe down the metal surfaces with an oily rag or a silicone cloth, and the job is done. Thanks for watching, and be sure to visit brownells.com today for more how-to articles and videos, along with all the accessories and tools for your firearm projects.